to the Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies. I'm James A. Janice, and today we're looking at Rec 4 Apocalypse, a Spanish film released in 2014. As noted in the Kill Count for Rec 3, the co-directors of the first two films took on parts 3 and 4 separately. Paco Plaza directed Rec 3 solo, while this time around, Jaume Balaguerro took the helm for himself. Just like the third entry, part 4 abandons the franchise's found footage foundation, but unlike Rec 3's nuptial tangent, Rec 4 continues the primary story of the series, taking place immediately after the second movie ended, but swapping out the apartment building for a big old boat. With the Tristana Madero story being continued, that means the return of Angela Vidal, which I'm very grateful for. The newlyweds were nice and all, and no doubt Clara was a badass with that chainsaw, but Angela Vidal is someone we know and love, who was our guiding force and narrator for that first terrifying movie. Even if parts of this film feel a little well-trodden and cliche, having her around as the main character again makes up for its weaknesses. As with the rest of this series, Rec 4 gets mighty bloody, and since we'll see heads exploding and monkeys frying, I went ahead and got a sponsor so I could leave all that uncensored. The Ridge Wallet is a light, sleek, industrial wallet that won't weigh you down as you're running away from demon zombies. It's slim but efficient, able to hold up to a dozen cards with additional room for cash. And if style is your concern, well you can get it in over 30 colors, including the one I snagged, Burnt Titanium. Get 10% off a Ridge Wallet and free shipping by going to ridge.com slash dmj and use the promo code dmj, you know, for dead meat james. That's ridge.com slash dmj. DMJ, promo code DMJ, for 10% off and free worldwide shipping and returns. Now let's set sail and see how many deaths we find when we take a good hard look at this motherfucking boat. The movie begins back in the apartment building in Barcelona, where some special forces have arrived to save Angela Vidal and blow this mother up once and for all. If only these dudes had watched the first two films, maybe they'd have been looking out for infected people like Manu. They take care of the demon zombie firefighter, but an infected Cesar grabs and bites one of them before they're able to put him down. Last reminder for this franchise, I don't double count victims like Manu and Cesar, who were counted in part one. I I also wait to count infected people until they show confirmed signs of infection. You know, most of the time. Just, just go with it. The dude who got bit is shot in the head by another officer named Costa. Costa's also been bit though, and since he knows the rules apply just as much to him, he gives Guzman a gun and gets Mercy killed with a headshot. Guzman, a doctor, hears Angela Vidal upstairs and goes to save her, while other officer Lucas decides to cut his losses and run. Upstairs, Guzman finds a fragile looking Angela and asks her to trust him as the frame rate slows and we fade to black. Come up on a title card with a red porthole instead of a record. Boarding dot. Shippa! Angela wakes up with her wrists tied down as a doctor named Gennard tells her that everything is gonna be okay thanks to the power of drugs. Mmm. We get a nod to the franchise's found footage origins as security cams show us various locations. Landing on a room with Guzman, that doctor dude we met in the apartment building. He doesn't know where he is right now, other than in a narrow nautical hallway, and he's not the only one who's confused. <laughs> Usted no sabrá dónde es la boda, ¿no? Que se conoce que... Maybe un poquito más de la cuenta. This unnamed woman ties Rec 4 to Rec 3, but just to save you an IMDb search, the actor playing her was not, in fact, in the previous film at all. Would have been kind of cool if she were, though. Dr. Gennard takes Angela's blood sample to his boss on the boat, Dr. Ricarte. It's the third time they've tested her for the infection, and for the third time, it comes back negative. But if she's not infected, why is she slipping out of her restraints and bashing people in the heads to run away like that. Sounds guilty to me. During her attempted escape, she runs into Guzman, who helps her get outside, only to find that they're stuck on a boat with a bunch of heavily armed soldiers. Dr. Ricarte has Angela taken back to her room as he tells Guzman that their sweet life on deck is to protect the larger population from the virus. 
es la única forma de garantizar el aislamiento total. Y lo sabe. Even though Guzman has tested negative for the infection, Ricarte's not taking any chances after Rec 3's wedding outbreak, which left the woman we met earlier as the one and only survivor. As the ship sails along, Guzman meets the people keeping it afloat. Captain Ortega, who's sailing his last trip before retirement, and Bridge Officer Goro, who's got two fewer arms than I'd expect. Both of them are annoyed that Ricarte and his soldiers keep overloading the ship's power with their super secret medical lab. There's also radio operator Nick, who's got great taste in t-shirts, but that doesn't excuse the way he'd be spying on Angela through the security cams. He says he's a huge fan of hers. Igual podría presentármela. Yeah, probably not though, dude. Rounding out the crew are Jesu, who works down in the engines, and the ship's chef, Edwin. Edwin keeps everyone on the ship fed, including that unnamed wedding lady and Guzman's partner, Lucas, who's also aboard. High five for friend reunion. Er, oh, fist bump? Yeah, we meant to do that. Guzman tells Lucas what the captain told him. Ricarte and his crew have shut down all radio communication and lifeboat operations in order to make this ship a floating quarantine. Hope y'all like being on a boat. Production spent four or five weeks shooting inside a real Russian fishing boat, which was so freaking huge it had a full-on fish factory inside. Yeah, a fish factory. Their words, not mine. Bella Gelo felt like a ship would be another good claustrophobic location, like the apartment building from the first two films. And he was right about that. A little too right. It's a type of structure that is designed exclusively for an objective, which is navigate. Y eso muchas veces no es compatible con, con el diseño que pide algo para rodar. Crew members like Pablo Rosso, cinematographer of all four rec films, had a hard time working in the cramped spaces of the ship. So after about a month of shooting on location, they moved to a set where they rebuilt parts of the ship's interior for convenience. Then again, they probably could have shot this thing anywhere and Pablo Rosso would have done it. Y los quiero como a las cuatro recs como si fueran mis hijas. Entonces... Entonces ha sido realmente un privilegio y un, una suerte poder estar desde el principio hasta el final en esta aventura. Dudes ride or die. Nick begins to retrieve the footage from Angela's camcorder, but since the hard drive's all busted ass, it's gonna take a while. In the meantime, he's hacked into Ricarte's security cameras and shows Guzman inside their super secret lab below deck. Inside the lab is a heavily guarded door, but they have no idea what's behind it because there are no cameras there. But I guess a camera wouldn't even be all that useful when the power keeps blacking out every night. The power's back on by more morning when Guzman takes Angela to the bridge so she can meet the ship's crew. Awkward ass Nick mentions that he's been trying to retrieve her camcorder footage, so she asks to see it. But Nick, dog, maybe don't ask for selfies with her while she's reliving the trauma induced from two back-to-back -back horror movies. So what are we gonna get? And no, she don't want your damn candy. In the lab, the doctors discover that all their door guarding has done them no good, because they be missing a monkey right now. They were using the monkey as a virus host to work on an antidote, but during last night's blackout, someone broke in and let it loose. In the kitchen, Chef Edwin has a blast listening to music and meal prepping his little heart out, until the infected monkey host shows up. It's occasionally a bit too CG, but it looks awesomely practical when it's on his back biting at him. And when he shoves it into a pan on the stove to kill it. Oh man, I hate seeing a little monkey guy get fried, but damn if I don't think that primate looks primo. That is one good fake monkey getting killed right there. When the crew's lunch is delayed, Goro goes to the kitchen to see what's up. Although Edwin keeps his back to him, Goro finds a tray full of delicious mystery meat. Wait, yo, that's a literal monkey's paw in there. I don't care how good that sauce tastes, no one would realistically be eating from that tray. But we need the infection to spread somehow, so a bunch of nameless soldiers and doctors chow down on it off screen, ensuring that one pain in the ass kill count is coming my way. Before eating, Lucas goes into the kitchen and finds Edwin fully infected and nasty right now. And I don't think locking him in the fridge like that is gonna help the guy stay fresh. Lucas stops the named characters from eating any of the food and tells them the chef is infected. If only he could have stopped Goro who's not feeling great after that meal, right as the ship sails into a big storm. Dr. Ricarte arrives in the cafeteria and is ready to test the antidote they've developed from the monkey host on Edwin. They take
tase him down and needle him in the neck, but all that does is make his skin straight bumping. Clearly, the antidote's a bust because that guy still looks like shit. So it's back to the drawing board for the doctors. They know it's up to them to stop this virus and save themselves. Nadie vendrá a buscarnos. Ya no. We see a few infected and dead people on security cams as Nick clicks around and realizes things are getting pretty fucked. Although Ricarte tells the others to stay in the cafeteria, they don't feel like waiting around as things get even more fucked. They arm themselves with a bunch of knives from the kitchen and head for the bridge, hoping Captain Ortega will help them. Sounds like a plan, as long as they don't run into any trouble along the way. Shit, I guess trouble ran into them. It's an infected soldier who attacks them pretty aggressively until Guzman is able to put the guy down with an ice pick to the head and a gunshot for the double tap. In the engine room, Jesu is keeping this ship afloat when an infected soldier appears and attacks him at full speed. Jesu beats the dude away and gives him a little steam shower as upstairs, another infected dude jumps out and knocks Lucas to the ground. The parallel fights get pretty wild with another infected infected monkey joining in for good measure, until Jesu stops his attacker with a wrench and Guzman puts down theirs with a gun. Don't forget the monkey, dude! There you go. Good job. During the commotion, the woman from the wedding disappears, so Lucas separates to look for her. He finds a body that I don't know if I've counted already, so here you go, and takes its gun as he heads out to find her. Guzman and Angela get to the bridge, where they have Nick do some cliche hacking in order to see what the doctors have been up to. They find Find a file on Medeiros, a name Angela recognizes from the penthouse newspaper clippings, and everyone gets brought up to speed on the whole viral possession and Vatican thing. Something Ricarte knows plenty about, since it turns out he had been Tristana Medeiros' original doctor. Ricarte and the other doctors are actually looking at Tristana Medeiros right now, on the footage from Angela's camcorder, which has finally been fully recovered. They watch as Tristana transfers her possession to Angela with a a sloppy makeout slug. They surmise that the parasite has been controlling Angela, but keeping her system immune from infection. That's why she keeps testing negative. The positive news is that if they can get that slug out of Angela, they might be able to make a proper antidote. Lucas finds the wedding woman, but you can already tell from the way she's being filmed that she's infected as all hell. Let's get that confirmed, shall we? There we go. All right, lady, we know already. Calm down. Lucas quickly deals with her, but then, just as quickly, six more infected dudes appear and chase him through the narrow hall. He just barely escapes them and locks them behind a door. He's found by Dr. Ricarte, who uses the young officer to gain access to the bridge. There, he and his toadies announce their plans to cut Angela open so they can have her tummy slug. There is some predictable resistance to the idea. But Ricarte appeals to Guzman, Dr. Dada, doctor, and promises him that they'll let Angela live. So Guzman acquiesces, and the others get to work, strapping down Angela to extract that demon worm. They're unable to find the parasite, or start the procedure though, before an infected Goro busts out of the bridge's bathroom, making a chaotic situation even chaoticer. Goro bites Dr. Gennard as Captain Ortega pieces out, and amidst this mess, Angela escapes too, getting by with a little passive help from Nick. Out on the deck, four more infected dudes growl and run around, either just for the fuck of it or as they chase after Captain Ortega. The editing makes it hard to tell. It's also unclear what exactly happens to Ortega, but I'll put him on the kill count as a suicide from jumping overboard. Again, it's not explicitly shown, but I'm almost positive that's what happens since we never see him again. The soldiers on the bridge shoot down Goro before turning their attention to Dr. Gennard and his bite wound. Gennard says they can make an antidote in time to save him, but as we all know in 2020, vaccines just don't come out that fast. So they execute him with an easy peasy gunshot. Ricarte and his soldiers head out to find Angela, who's running around below deck with a fire axe, disabling all the security cameras so the soldiers can't see where she is. Oh, and she got a scalpel too? We love a dual wielding queen! As with the other films of this franchise, Wreck 4 was a very physical movie to make. Just take it from Guzman's actor, Paco Manzanero. Yo voy al gimnasio, yo juego al pádel, yo escalo, yo hago muchas cosas, ¿no? Y yo he sufrido como un 
perro en esta película. But the physicality never seemed to be an issue for Manuela Velasco, who was in, quote, plena forma for her return to the role of Angela Vidal. Y Manuela es impresionante, es una auténtica atleta. O sea, una máquina. She passes two dead bodies that I'm not sure if I've counted before, so doing that now for the hell of it, as Nick radios through one of the corpse's walkies to tell Angela he'll help her navigate through the ship. Using the security cams that she hasn't knocked out yet, Nick guides Angela to where Ricarte is. She pulls him aside with a scalpel and tells him he's wrong about her being infected. Or at least he'd better hope so, cause she puts her mouth where her mouth is and bites him on the hand. Ricarte goes back out to the hallway, where the last doctor guy gets jumped and killed by three infected dudes who are also able to kill the last soldier guy after Ricarte locks him behind a door to save himself. Ricarte gives himself a blood test as Nick gives Angela the secret code to get inside the lab. Ricarte's test results are negative, which means Angela is clean, so it's not a parasite inside her holding a scalpel to his neck. It's just her badass self, wanting him to tell all the soldiers aboard to leave her the hell alone. Might be hard giving orders to a bunch of demon zombie soldiers though. Lucas and the Goose Man go to a hatch full of fishing equipment that they plan to use as weapons, namely a couple of spear guns, but also an outboard motor. Nice. They get back to the bridge where they decide that Guzman will go help Angela in the lab while Lucas and Nick go to the engine room and get this ship running right so they can finally head home. When Guzman gets to the lab, Angela realizes what's happened. Guzman got the lab access code from Nick, then snuck in during the power outage to let the monkey host free. And why would he do such a reckless thing? Because the demon worm's inside him now! It transferred itself from Angela to Guzman back in the apartment building, right after he found her and the movie faded to black. Not sure why she wouldn't remember that happening, but uh, whatever. Ricarte's unable to follow this shit either, so he throws his hands up and quits, initiating a self-destruct sequence in an effort to keep the virus from getting off the ship. A 20-minute timer begins as Guzman reveals that Angela was right. He is, in fact, Demon Virus HQ right now and he'd like to go do demon virus stuff, so how about she take a trip into this cargo hold? Down there, she finds cages full of bloody animal remains, cause this is where the doctors had been keeping all their test monkeys. And sounds like a lot of them are out and about now, crawling all over the place. As Angela begins climbing a ladder out of there, Lucas and Nick run into an especially brawny infected beefcake. Who the fuck is this guy, Zombie Batista? The big boy runs at them, but Lucas puts him down with the motor, mulching his head with the whirring blade until his skull just up and explodes. Awesome! They get to the engine room and try to figure out why the ship's not moving. Well, probably because their engineer Jesu is an infected demon zombie. Not sure why we spent a few scenes with this character, when in the end, he really didn't do too much. They put Jesu down with a spear to the head, only for another zombie bastard to appear, and then another another one. Man, I hate how all these dudes are bald. I can't tell any of them apart. It's fucking Alien 3 all over again. With Nick frozen in fear, Lucas is overpowered by the zombie, who bites out a bunch of his neck flesh. And I'm just counting Lucas now, since we never see him infected later. The lights on the ship go out again, and somehow, Nick's able to escape without the zombies ever coming after him. Doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Nick runs into Ricarte, who says they should take this inflatable raft and that outboard motor and blow this pop stand. But Nick refuses to abandon Angela, so he knocks Ricarte out and takes the raft for himself. If Angela wants to escape this ship, first she'll have to escape a bunch of demon monkeys who are chasing her through chutes and ladders. She very fortunately falls right in front of Nick, and, thinking fast, aims the outboard motor up towards the air duct so all the infected monkeys run into the blades and kill themselves. May look a little CG, but I mean, I can definitely say this was something I haven't seen before. A couple more infected dudes appear, but Angela and Nick lock them behind a door. With only six minutes left until detonation, they've got no time for distractions like that. Oh, uh, what did I just say, Guzman? They don't have time for your bullshit! The demon possessed doctor attempts to swap the soul slug back into Angela's body, but Nick gives her the spear gun and she uses it to shoot Guzman in the neck, killing the human host that this idiot parasite just went back inside of. 
stupid bug. The Demon Worm was the first animatronic ever used in the Rex series created by the franchise's perennial effects artist, David Ambit. The inner workings of the worm were covered in what looks like pantyhose before they put it inside its final fleshy cover. Pretty gross. Ambit also did makeup for all the infected folk on the ship, alongside Lucia Salanueva, who, honestly, just from this one shot, I ship with Manuela Velasco. Nick and Angela run out to the deck where a whole host of zombies come at them in the rain. But guess what? Just like with Rec 3, I'm giving up on the impossible counting job here. There's no way all these dudes are new infected fuckers, so I'm just calling it quits. Don't like it? Find a new kill counter. They make it to the stern of the ship, where Nick tosses the inflatable raft into the water below. Angela swings down and does a backy flop into the water, and Nick jumps in after her with the motor. They both climb aboard the raft and start the motor up, and it takes them away from the ship right as the detonation sequence goes off, killing all those zombies I've already counted, as well as Dr. Ricarte, who I hadn't counted yet, so onto the list he goes. Notably, the explosion does not kill the demon worm, which just found a new home inside a little fishy boy. The movie ends with a mid credit sequence showing that Nick and Angela have made it back to land, so hey, at least someone in this series got to live. How many people could have really used a lifeboat in Rec 4? Let's find out and get to the numbers. Safety first. By my count, 41 people were killed or infected in Rec 4. Though, obviously, I gave up in the end there, didn't I? If only I had a crew roster, Return of the Obra Dinn style. With a runtime of 95 minutes, that left us with a victim on average every 2.32 minutes. I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest kill to the infected big boy killed by the outboard motor. Love a good head explodey. Doll machete for lamest kill will go to, uh, I don't know, the security cam guys? Yeah, the security cam guys, sure. And that's it. Rec 4 Apocalypse came out in 2014 and is the final film of the Rec series. Next week I'll look at the sequel to Quarantine, the American remake of Rec, but until then I'm James A. Janice. This has been The Kill Count. Thanks a lot for watching The Kill Count for Rec 4 Apocalypse. I want to thank some patrons like William Aaron Kenny, Alex Furness, Anthony Wilson, Jared Green, Aaron Messick, Danielle Santana, and Jessica Jenkins. All right, we're done with the Rec series, so you don't have to hear me try to speak Spanish anymore. I know I'm not the best at it, but I tried. Thanks, everyone. Be good people.